I don't remember the first time, it was probably Embarcadero. Hot Embarcadero, spot. yeah, for I sure. I kind of met everyone, unless you're getting harassed. I kind of just uh, kept my head down and skated, but I did get harassed. I mean, people were just asking me for money. It was more like, you know, Carl Watson trying to get a dollar out of me. Shut up. Always. <laughs> I think I told him once, I was like, I was like, you don't even know my name. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a dollar. Of course. Shut up, dude. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was um, setting trends. He's a fashion icon. He was totally setting trends. I mean, you know, it's like, that's what happens. Yeah, I was very heavily influenced by Criss Cross. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did you? I like the guns. When? Remember like Pupeki kick flipped it? It was all around that time because mm -hmm. we were all ollieing it. I actually tried to 360 flip it for like an hour and a half. And then I couldn't walk for like a week. Damn. I came really close though. <laughs> I did an ollie backside heel down the, down the seven and I landed primo. And I was like, fuck, my foot, my foot feels so weird. And I took off my shoe and my, my pinky and the toe next to it were fully sideways. And I was like, holy shit. And I, call, I went over to the phone booth that was next to the bus station. And I called my mom and go, hey, mom, what do I do? My toes are sideways. <laughs> FTC. FTC. Did we have, we have a driver at, no, a DC, DC. DC. DC tour. Super tour. Yeah, we did some super tours. Those were always fun. I remember Mike had a red do-rag and he was doing nitrous. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. I don't think so. I don't remember the actual time I met him, but all I remember is he was just always around and we were just always skating together and we were kind of, we were at the same level of skating. So we just, you know, we were always like challenging each other like 360 Ollie or 360 Flip. And we were always kind of just together. And then, you know, Keenan being Keenan, he would just, you know, all of a sudden just pretty much be living at your house. So he becomes <laughs> your best friend no matter what. He was happy all the time, laughing. That's something he always brought to the, the table was, you know, he kind of just made everyone feel comfortable and made everything happy. You know, so, you know, you kind of never saw Keenan's downtime, you know, like when is Keenan upset or, you know, that it's always, it's always a fun time, a party, you know, let's do something fun. I don't know, one time we were at the Canadian border and I was super psyched that he was listening to Eminem's first album because I didn't think anyone liked it and I liked it and I was hyped that he was sitting there in his headphones just singing or rapping it out loud. He had a good music collection. It would be like Morrissey and Radiohead. It would be his basically like range of music was all across the board. Like you wouldn't think, like somebody would be like, oh, he's only hip hop or whatever. But he was like, like the most emo of emo to like, the hardcore hip hop. Yeah, and he DJ. I think he DJed in the vans a lot. It's something we've been talking about for a long time. The history with Rick and Mike, you know, just kind of like I've been around these guys for so long and um, now we all have brands. It was something to do something cool and also give some, um, pay some homage to Keenan. You know, I wanted to do something for Keenan forever, but there's been a lot of little legal things in the background and now we can actually do things and, um, you know, kind of promote him a little more than he was promoted, you know, and uh, show people who he was. He knew Keenan, he was a player. Keenan was having a good time. I was so jealous of just stories he would always tell. He'd get back from Australia and I was like, fuck, man. Glad to see you. I had a funny dream and you were wearing funny shoes. 